With the countdown for the ODI World Cup well and truly on, the Indian team is looking to build a solid momentum as they target a third World Cup title in 50-over format. But is Team India over-reliant on Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma after the team's lackluster start in the West Indies T20 series? Hello and a warm welcome to this edition of Vion Podcast. I'm Aditya Pimple and joining me today is Abhinav Singh as we speak on Team India's over-reliance on Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma. So, hello Abhinav, I hope you are doing well and just as we are saying, you know, that uh, the ODI World Cup is around the corner, the countdown has well and truly begun. But uh, the Indian team, as usual, is having their very own problems, over-reliant on some of the big names. And this is Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma, no uh, price for guessing. Yeah, absolutely. Going into the World Cup with only few months left, we don't have a middle order. We don't have the, I, I mean, a basic idea of who's going to play there. Only what we know is that Virat and Rohit have to play till the end. The 50 overs, the entirety of it. Or otherwise, you can see the team crumble like a house of cards. And we don't have to go a, a lot further back to see the example. Take this West Indies series. You saw what happened uh, when in one of the matches. Virat and Rohit were missing. So, yeah problems ahead. I, I guess, you know, uh, for just a f- reminder to the fans, you know, both Virat and Ruit were part of the ODI setup. They played the first ODI. India wins that first ODI. But it was totally different story. Virat and Ruit were rested. That is the new term that is being implemented by BCCI for mm, players to be dropped, you know, as we have been saying in a previous podcast. So, they were rested. Uh, in the second ODI, the Indian team loses uh, and they lose by a uh, comprehensive margin, you know, they lose by six wickets uh, and that is where you know there was that reality check uh, whether this team is really uh, over reliant on Virat and Rohit uh, but uh, in terms of numbers you know uh, they have a very proven category uh, Rohit was India's top scorer in the 2019 World Cup uh, and so was uh, Virat Kohli in astonishing form as well with 443 runs so Abhinav uh, do you really think that the Indian team management uh, needs to find a replacement or do they need to make sure that they can carry both Virat and Rohit for at least another couple of years? I mean, uh, if uh, there has to be a certain tipping point and if this campaign of India's in the World Cup, in the 50-over World Cup, if it fails, which will be a big shame because the World Cup is happening in India, that should be the sign that... uh, probably you need better management and and I think the onus falls on BCCI. BCCI and selection committee and the coaches, we haven't been very consistent in selecting our teams. So you cannot just unload the blame on uh, probably uh, Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli because they have made it clear that they want to step back. But if the team is not evolving, if our backroom staff is not evolving, if BCCI is not evolving, You have no other option but to play them again for the 2024 World Cup. And I'm pretty sure they'll give their all. But if you are looking at the future and if you want Indian cricket to grow, you probably have to have other youngsters coming through the ranks. Although, you know, uh, we have uh, very good options. You know, Ishan Kishan is rising from the ashes. We also have... uh, Shubman Gill, who has been in blistering form in uh, 2023. But the main cause of concern is the fact that uh, when it comes to the big tournaments, you need that big names. And that is where, you know, uh, you again have to go back to Virat and Ruit. And I just don't see, you know, uh, why this Indian team is uh, not able to find that uh, winning touch, you know. Because I saw uh, Akshar Patel playing at four, Surya Kumar Yadav, he hasn't been in greatest of the forms, although he did score uh, uh, 82 against West Indies in the T20 match. But then he's a different player altogether in the ODI team. But they just don't have that winning formula at the moment without uh, Rohit and uh, Virat. And it's uh, again, it boils down to the selection. We haven't been consistent. We choose a player, we pick a player, we give them a a very short rope. For example, you take the example of uh, Surya Kumar Yadav. He was picked for the test team. No reason why, why, why he was picked and no reason why he was again dropped. If you are looking at that X factor, I mean, 
stay with them you you are picking an x factor player and if you don't stick with them and it's just not about surya kumar yadav this has been going on for the last 5 or 6 years we don't give our youngsters a long rope and if you do, if you take example of rohit how many years did it take to uh for him to kick on it took a lot of time you have to persevere with uh, great players they take time to come to their shape they take time to come to their form and it has happened with any of the youngsters you take example of shubman gill ishan kishan we don't know their right positions we we might have a basic idea of where they bat in the t20 setup but once we go to a 50 over world cup or 50 over format we have no clue uh I mean two or two months to go to the world cup we still don't have our opening combination bar two players you know that uh, Rohit Sharma is going to open because he's probably the best player in these conditions and then Virat Kohli will do what he does at number 3 other than that what do you have <laughs> I guess uh, that is the big uh, advantage that the Indian team will have but you mentioned the selectors you know the selectors panel which is now being led by Ajit Agarkar If Indian team does fail he will just come out and say I was just new to the surroundings and I just couldn't uh, absorb into the system so we can just give him a bye in that regards that he was new to the system but then you mentioned about uh, Surya Kumar Yadav coming into the test team whereas Prithvi Shaw at that very particular moment of time had scored 379 in the Ranji trophy he didn't get into the test team and he was in the t20 team so you just don't understand what is wrong with this uh, selectors uh, criteria as well because if someone is performing in a certain format they are not getting picking up because uh, you saw what prithvi shaw did yesterday 244 in uk's one day cup for northamptonshire so the selectors you know they certainly are uh, having a big uh, irony at the moment uh, and do we really think that uh, our selectors the ones to be blamed at this stage oh, absolutely for an instance you'll be able to understand quantum physics and i am very bad at maths but i'll still be able to understand what is quantum physics but i'll never be able to understand what bcc has been doing the past few years i'm being honest i mean um rahul dravid may have been one of the greatest players to come out from our system but it he has been a very passive coach and i think that trickles down from the top how bcci has been choosing its player i, I mean you go to football there are footballing greats like steven gerrard frank lampard they may have been the best players but it doesn't automatically translate into being a great coach similar can be said for rahul dravid he has been given a long enough rope which uh, which younger players haven't been given but his performance the team's performance and again the results they haven't been really nice we have lost to bangladesh we have lost to west indies and our icc performance has been shambolic so it starts with bcci the uh, the selectors they have been choosing i have high hopes with uh, ajit agarkar but uh, i'm really not sold on the idea of rahul dravid and the team backing it so, so what what my bigger point is if team india fails you know even if they fail to make it to the semi finals it will still be a disaster you know and if that is a disaster do we even see rahul dravid uh, lasting beyond this odi world cup because i because i have to agree with you what you said you know this team really doesn't look good enough uh, without rohit and virat and if they don't finish uh, in that semi final positions Rahul Dravid should get the sack. Oh, of course. I mean, I mean, uh, the logic says that he should be sacked, but this is BCC I were talking about, so we really don't know what happens behind those doors. Only probably Jay Shah knows. <laughs> probably <laughs> Jay Shah will have a better idea regarding that. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, since we are running out of time, you know, we will make sure that you get into our conversations as well. You can write into our Instagram X and our YouTube channels as well, and do make sure that uh, you tune into our Vion podcast as well. For now, since we are running out of time, do make sure that you tune in and join us again next time. From now, from me and the rest of the team, goodbye and thanks for joining.